Welcome back to MSNBC Live. And at this moment, some new information on the international search for this man, Salah Abdeslam. The lawyer for a man who rode back to Belgium with a suspected Paris attacker says Abdeslam was extremely nervous and may have been wearing a suicide bomb vest. We'll have the latest details on the manhunt as they come in. Suicide bombs strapped to terrorists played a big role in the attacks in Paris and raised questions about the ISIS operation, specifically about the group's bomb makers. We're joined by Henry Morgenstern. He's with Security Solutions International and is an expert on the topic of bomb making. Good to see you. And I'm wondering, so we've had eight days now. They've had a chance to look at the explosives, what's left of them uh, at the various sites here in Paris. What will they be able to tell from looking at that? Well, Chris, um, good to be with you. They'll be looking at um, the materials that were used, which leave traces, of course, the mechanisms and the detonators that were used uh, to build those vests. As far as I know, the vests were made from TATP, which is triacetone triperoxide. And as you're probably very aware, it's all over the internet. It's been around for a long time and it's very easy to make. Having said that, it's uh, unstable and that can work in our favor because there are a number of accidents related to that uh, explosive. Didn't seem to be accidents in this case, though. At least uh, the early indications would seem to be, and from the outside uh, looking in, in addition to what we have heard um, from officials, is that these were very well timed, obviously. They didn't go off any other time, but when they intended uh, them to. So if this is a sophisticated bomb maker, will there be, as uh, people have often written, uh, some sort of signature? Will they be able to tell who likely uh, or at least narrow it down to who might be behind making them. Yes, they can very they can they can very much pinpoint um, if there are specific components being used. But Chris, I I would just caution against um, considering the bomb maker to be the key, as it was. I'm an Israeli American. In the 90s and the early parts of the 2000s, Israel was fixed on bomb makers and uh, spent a considerable amount of time taking them out. Unfortunately, today, and that's why I think the distinction between the lone wolf and the organized attack has become meaningless, look at the Boston Marathon bombers. Um, all this information is available through their own publications like The Beak and through the Internet. So um, anybody can really put together a suicide vest. It's not that complicated an undertaking. What we need to do, I think, is enlist... Um, instead of uh, people becoming worried and panicked, enlist people in being more aware. Because again, it's the smartest weapon in the world. If you fire a missile, it goes towards its target. If a suicide bomber goes out one day, he can turn around and come back the next day if he doesn't like what he sees. So um, I think that it's something that we have to create awareness of in, the, um, in our country and uh, keep ourselves very vigilant and, uh, and be able to detect things that are not right. You know, if anyone's traveled to Israel, they will know, for example, that uh, one of the things you look for on a bus is someone wearing a coat at a time when that would be inappropriate, when it's too warm out. Uh, you do when you live in a place like Israel or you visit frequently to a place like that become very aware. But beyond the old see something, say something, if you're in an airport and you see an unattended bag, what can people do? What would you say to people? What can they look for? Well, the very first thing they should do is never touch anything. Uh, it's extremely dangerous. For example, the chemical that was used in the explosions in Paris can be set off instantly by an impact. So just touching it could set it off. The first thing to do is to call. First of all, familiarize yourself, your family, with who to call in your area. There are perfectly um, available numbers for fusion centers and for people that uh, know what to do. And of course, there's 911. But do, first of all, if you see something suspicious, don't be afraid to let your instincts guide you. Call 911 and tell them that what you see. That may cause bomb squads and, uh, and law enforcement and first responders a little bit more work, but that's preferable to the alternative. Henry Morgenstern, good talking to you. Thanks so much for being with us. Chris, thank you.